Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the My Night Raw review. My Night Raw tonight was from the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. And the show just ended. And My Night Raw tonight, I thought it was a very mediocre show in my opinion. I thought it was better than last week's show. But still, just the show tonight was just very mediocre in my opinion. But tonight on uh, My Night Raw, we had Elimination Chamber qualifying matches. We had Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed. That was an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. We had Liv Morgan versus Zoe Stark. Elimination Chamber qualifying match. LA Knight versus Ivar. Also Elimination Chamber qualifying match. And we also had Jaden McDonough versus R-Truth. And The New Day, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston... And Jey Uso. Jey Uso teamed up with Kofi and Xavier to take on Imperium of Giovanni Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, and Gunther. And in the main event, we had Shinsuke Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. But overall, My Night Raw, very mediocre show it was. But I didn't do a uh, SmackDown review on Friday, I said in my Movie Hunter video that I was going to do it, but didn't get a chance to. I was busy uh, after uh, SmackDown. But I thought SmackDown was a decent show. I mean, we had Elimination Chamber qualifying matches. Of course, we had Bianca Belair. She ended up winning a uh, match and qualifying for Elimination Chamber, so she's going to be in it. So that was uh, no surprise there. We have Randy Orton going into the Elimination Chamber as well. But let's jump right into the review. My Night Raw opened up with the first match of the night, which was a six-man tag. The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Jey Uso, main event Jey Uso, versus Imperium, Gunther, Ludwig Kaiser, and and Giovanni Vinci. And this was a very good uh, six-man tag. Really liked it. And before the match got on the way, it played a replay of the confrontation that we saw on My Night Raw last week between Gunther and Jey Uso. So it showed, you know, Jey end up taking Gunther down. And the New Day end up running out. You know, Kofi and Xavier end up running out to make the save. So we saw a recap of that. And then the match got on the way. Where Kofi and Kaiser end up starting off the match. Both guys end up locking up. And Kofi end up getting Kaiser in the corner. Kaiser end up turning Kofi around. And started punching Kofi in his forehead. Kofi fought back. But Kaiser end up chopping at uh, Kofi's chest. Kofi ended up chopping back at Kaiser a few times, and Kaiser ended up elbowing Kofi in his head and took him down. Kaiser then ended up kicking Kofi in his chest. Kaiser hit the ropes. Kofi ended up avoiding a kick from Kaiser, and Kofi ended up drop kicking Kaiser down. Kofi then connected with a clothesline, and he tagged in Xavier Woods. So both Woods and Kingston end up going back and forth on Kaiser. Just, you know, beating him down. Woods end up having Kaiser down the corner. So we had uh, Kofi and Xavier and also Jey Uso end up doing a stomp to Kaiser. Woods then end up whipping Jay into Kaiser for a hip attack. Jay then sneered at Gunther as Kaiser ended up crawling to his corner. He tagged in Gunther. So Gunther ended up locking his eyes on Jey Uso. And then he tagged in Giovanni Vinci. So Gunther didn't do anything to Jay. He just tagged in uh, Vinci. So Vinci ended up taking Jay down from behind. Vinci ended up mocking uh, Jay's dance, you know, the, doing the Jay Uso. And he ended up tagging Gunther in. Vinci held Jay up. Gunther then ripped Jay's shirt off, and he ended up smashing uh, 
He ended up smashing Jay's chest with a chop. Kaiser ended up tagging in. He started punching away at Jay. Kaiser ended up grabbing Jay, but Jay ended up uppercutting Kaiser. He then punched Vinci off the apron and took Kaiser down. Jay went after Gunther, but Gunther ended up avoiding that. Kaiser then ended up clotheslining Jay from behind and knocked Jay over the top rope. Gunther then ended up taking Jay out with a big boot at ringside. And then Mine Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Mine Night Raw came back from the commercial, Jay ended up firing out of a chin lock that was locked in on Kaiser. Jay connected with a back suplex to Kaiser. So both uh, Jay and Kaiser were down. Xavier Woods and Vinci ended up taking in. Woods ended up taking Vinci down. He knocked Kaiser off the apron. Kingston ended up hitting uh, Vinci with a cross body block. Woods ended up following it up with a swing and neck breaker. Kofi then connected with a famous start on Vinci. And that led to Woods end up hitting a tornado DT and then on uh, Vinci. And then Kofi ended up flattening uh, Vinci with a frog splash. So we had uh, Woods end up going for the cover. And Vinci ended up kicking out. Woods and Kaiser started to brawl at ringside. Kofi ended up getting involved. And he ended up kicking Kaiser in his face. Kofi ended up hitting Vinci with a leaping clothesline. And he hit the ropes for a boom drop to Vinci. Kofi ended up setting up for the Trouble in Paradise, but Kaiser grabbed Kofi's feet. Vinci then knocked Kofi over the top rope, and Kaiser ended up driving Kofi headfirst into the ring steps. Kofi slowly got on the apron, but Vinci ended up kicking Kofi in the head to knock him back to ringside. Vinci ended up getting Kofi in the ring. He ended up going for the cover, and Kofi ended up kicking out. So Gunther tagged in. We had Gunther end up stomping away at Kofi. He ended up connecting with a uppercut, which looked nice uh, to uh, Kofi. Gunther then ended up bending Kofi on the ropes, and he elbowed Kofi on the bridge of his nose. Gunther started taunting Woods and Jay on the apron, and he elbowed Kofi in the neck. Gunther then connected with another uppercut to Kofi. So Kofi was in uh, Imperium's corner. He started firing off both Kaiser and Vinci. Gunther then ended up stomping Kofi from making a tag, and he chopped Kofi down. Gunther then snapped around and chopped Jay off the apron. Gunther then grabbed Kofi's legs, turned them over to apply a Boston Crab. So Jay saw enough because Gunther was talking trash to Jay as he applied the Boston Crab on Kofi. So he ended up entering the ring. Jay stepped up to Gunther. He slapped Gunther in the face. Uh, which was crazy. So Gunther was just absolutely furious at that. He let go of the Boston Crab on Kofi. The referee ended up separating both Gunther and Jay. And then Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Kaiser ended up pulling Kofi away from his corner. And Kaiser ended up knocking Xavier Woods off the apron. He ended up missing Jay. And Kofi then ended up hitting Kaiser with a back body drop. Jay and Vinci end up taking in as Jay ended up hitting a pair of clotheslines to Vinci. And he ended up uh, catching Vinci with a Samoan drop. He ended up delivering a Samoan drop to Kaiser. Jay ended up hitting Kaiser with a run and hip attack. He ended up hitting another uh, run and hip attack to Vinci. Jay ended up going after Gunther, but Gunther avoided that. Jay then super kicked Kaiser down, and he super kicked Vinci out of midair, which was crazy. Nice spot there. So Gunther tagged in. Jay ended up avoiding a chop from Gunther. He started punching away at Gunther. So Gunther ended up chopping Jay down. Gunther ended up blocking a kick from Jay, but Jay ended up spin. He ended up pin a insiguri to Gunther. Jay then started punching Gunther into the corner. Gunther then ended up dropping Jay on the apron. But Jay started punching Gunther back. Jay ended up hitting Gunther with a cross body block. He ended up going for the cover switch. Gunther kicked out. So Jay ended up charging for a spear to Gunther. But Gunther ended up taking Jay down. And he ended up chopping his chest. Gunther then ended up knocking Xavier and Kofi off the apron. He then grabbed Jay. And he annihilated Jay with a short arm clothesline. So Gunther ended up going for the cover. 
Jay kicked out, to which Gunther couldn't believe that Jay kicked out of that. Gunther headed to the top rope. Of course, he was mocking uh, Jay's dance. You know, everybody doing a Jay Uso. So Gunther went for a splash. Jay ended up getting his knees up. Jay then ended up hitting Gunther with the spear, uh, which was a good spot there. Jay went for the cover, and Kaiser broke up the pin. So at the end of the match, we end up having Vinci end up going for a power bomb to Jay, but Jay ended up getting out of that. Vinci ended up big booting Jay, but Jay super kicked Vinci. So Xavier and Kofi end up getting the ring, and we had uh, Xavier, Kofi, and Jay end up hitting Vinci with the one D, which was cool. So they end up knock knocking Kaiser back. Kofi end up hitting uh, Kaiser with a somersault senton. Jay went to the top rope and he delivered the Uso splash to Kaiser. So they end up going for the cover, and there you go. The New Day and Jay Uso ended up winning the match. Post match, Gunther was irate at ringside because of his guys losing the match for them. But overall, very good match to open up Monday Night Raw tonight. You know, the New Day and Jey Uso did a good job. Also, uh, Imperium. Just uh, these guys, all these guys worked really well here in the, uh, the match tonight. And then we had Bobby Lashley. The almighty Bobby Lashley. He made his way to the ring alongside... The Street Profits, you know, Montez Ford, Angelo Dawkins, and B-Fab. Of course, Bobby Lashley was going to face uh, Bronson Reed in a Elimination Chamber qualifying match, which uh, was coming up after the commercial. So as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw a promo from Andrade. Andrade ended up saying that life has taught him that he has to decide what he wants. And what he deserves. Andrade ended up saying that he loves this business. And that he had his first match. When he was 13. He wanted to say that he has been a champion many times. He ended up saying when he came to WWE. He became the NXT champion. He ended up saying that he won the United States Championship. And that the titles were not enough. He ended up saying three years ago. He had to leave. To remember who he was. He has to say now he is back, and he knows the direction is clear. So very good uh, promo from Andrade here. Glad that Andrade, you know, is back in the WWE. You know, with him mentioned three years ago, he had to leave to remember who he was. He went to AW, and you know, did stuff there. But Tony Khan wasn't booking him uh, that much. Glad that Andrade is back in WWE, and hopefully they can get Andrade right here. Give Andrade the push that he deserves. So let's hope that WWE gives Andrade what he wants. So the guy deserves a big push. I mean, when he was in AEW, Tony Khan wasn't, you know, booking him right. Let's get Andrade, you know, in a match on TV and let's start his push. And then we had Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed, Elimination Chamber qualifying match. This was a decent match here. Of course, Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre qualified for uh, the Elimination Chamber on uh, Friday on SmackDown. So the match got on the way. Both. Uh, Lashley and Reed end up blocking up. Reed end up shoving Lashley. Reed then lifted uh, Lashley up, but Lashley ended up sliding off. He ended up going for the hurt lock. Reed ended up finding out that. Then he backed Lashley into the corner. Reed ended up sending Lashley into the corner, but Lashley ended up knocking Reed back with a clothesline. He left Frog uh, Reed and he connected with a clothesline. Lashley ended up charging for a spear, but Reed. End up sending uh, Lashley's shoulder first to the ring post. Reed got on the apron and he dived off with a shoulder tackle, knocking Lashley over the barricade and into the timekeeper's area. 
And that uh, was when Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Reed was still in control of the match. He started clubbing away at Lashley in the corner. Reed ended up pulling Lashley out of the corner and connected with a short arm clothesline. Reed ended up going for a suplex, but Lashley ended up getting out. He ended up kicking Reed. Lashley then ended up dropping uh, Reed with a flatliner. He grabbed Reed and connected with a vertical suplex. And Lashley ended up going for the cover. Reed ended up kicking out. Lashley then clotheslined Reed in the corner. And he backed up to hit a second clothesline. Lashley ended up backing up. He ended up hitting a run shoulder to Reed. He set up for the neck breaker, but Reed ended up shoving Lashley off. And Reed then super kicked Lashley. Reed ended up crushing Lashley with the Death Valley driver. He ended up going for the cover, to which Lashley ended up kicking out. So we had Lashley end up sizing Reed up. He ended up charging at Reed, but Reed ended up kneeing Lashley in his face. Reed then slammed Lashley and connected with a senton splash. Reed then headed to the top rope to deliver the tsunami. But Lashley popped up and slammed Reed down to the mat. Lashley then connected with the spear to Reed. And he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Bobby Lashley ended up winning the match. So Lashley was it will now join Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton in the Elimination Chamber. And, of course, the winner of that match will face Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Which I thought, I said, I want to see maybe, you know, since The Rock is not doing anything at WrestleMania. And Seth Rollins uh, wasn't doing anything at WrestleMania. Has Seth Rollins versus The Rock at WrestleMania. But I'm glad that they're going uh, this route here. You know, the winner of the Elimination Chamber will face Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. You know, that's a good route there. Sounds better than what I said, you know, having Seth Rollins and The Rock go at it. But overall, it was a decent match between Lashley and uh, Bronson Reed. Sadly, Bronson Reed is not, you know, going to his home country in Australia for the Elimination Chamber. And then we saw Jackie Redman. Jackie Redman interviewed Sami Zayn earlier in the day. You know, in the uh, empty arena, in the stands. So, Sami Zayn ended up saying that last week, he was a contender. Then he lost his WrestleMania opportunity on SmackDown. He ended up telling Jackie Redmond that any athlete who declares they will do something and falls short feels embarrassed. He ended up saying that this is something he has felt many times in his career. But that feeling is overtaken by his belief in himself. He wanted to say that last year, Cody Rhodes told him that if he wanted to be in the main event of WrestleMania, he had to believe in himself. Sami Zayn ended up saying that he believes he is a contender. He ended up saying that it won't be easy, but he will take the title. So then we saw Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura appeared on the Titantron. He ended up saying that Sami Zayn wants the sympathy of the people and is a clever guy. Just like Cody. He ended up saying they swindle people. But if Sami Zayn doesn't let his real emotions out, he won't tolerate that. Nakamura ended up saying that he will pick up Sami Zayn's soul and keep his warpath moving forward. And he just saw the tension on Sami Zayn's face. He really wanted to, to punch the hell out of Nakamura while he was saying that on the, uh, the Titantron. But overall... You know, good uh, video, you know, interview with Sami Zayn here. Jackie Redmond interviewing Sami Zayn. Really like the style to it. You know, just interview Sami Zayn in the stands, you know, in the empty arena. Really like it. And then we had Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes ended up coming out. We had two... Whoa's happen during this. So the crowd ended up chanting for Cody. Cody ended up saying, So, Lexington, Kentucky, what do you want to talk about? Cody ended up saying that he believes they can talk about how, in the main event of WrestleMania, he'll be challenging for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship against the Tribal Chief, 
Roman Reigns. Cody, I'm saying that it took a while to say that. He kept saying the only reason he's able to say it is because of the fans. He kept saying that the fans made their voices heard. It trended for a full week. They spread the word. So the crowd started chanting, we want Cody. And that was right for Cody to say that. Nobody wanted to see Roman versus The Rock. Who was asking for that match at WrestleMania? So WWE took it upon the fans. They heard the outcry of the fans. And you know they went with the plan that they were going to go with. Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. So they actually listened to the fans and the outcry from the fans. So Cody ended up saying that he doesn't know how he could repay the fans. So Cody ended up saying that they're making him emotional. The fans are making him emotional. He ended up saying that he is a passionate guy. And he's passionate about this place and his legacy. So he ended up saying that his astrological sign is cancer. So he wears his emotions on his sleeve. Cody ended up saying that he doesn't want to get emotional because then he would be a crybaby. To which the crowd end up booing and chanting, Rocky sucks. So Cody ended up saying that while everyone was saying, we want Cody, one man 100% didn't want to hear it. He ended up saying that same man happens to be the most famous human being alive. The original people's champion. And the one who coined the term Cody Crybabies. Of course, he was talking about The Rock. Remember at the WrestleMania 40 kickoff press conference, you had The Rock slapping the hell out of Cody. And that led to tension, you know, at the end of the kickoff press conference. So then it showed The Rock appearing on Pat McAfee's show last Thursday before the press conference, the kickoff press conference, where The Rock was like, oh, these Cody crybabies. So Cody shook his head in the ring. He kept saying that he knows that promos are different from the last time Rock was here. And very few can fathom matching The Rock on promos. He kept saying that he wants to know what they're actually expected to do with the Nuggets. Where The Rock ended up saying that the fans could shove them up their asses. So Cody then ended up asking Pat McAfee what he said. So Pat McAfee ended up acting all coy. Like he was you know, a little bit nervous to say it. So Cody ended up saying that they shouldn't mistake his candor for weakness. He ended up saying that he is a fan of The Rock. And everyone has been a fan of his at one point. Of course I was. You know, watching The Rock was, you know, what made me get into watching wrestling. You know, what got me into watching WWE back in the day. You know, from his in-ring work to his fantastic promos. You know, The Rock, like I said, is what got me into watching, you know, wrestling. Got me into watching WWE. He kept saying one thing The Rock does not do well is listen. He kept saying at the press conference he said nothing to defile his ancestors. And that he slapped him in the face in public. He kept saying sometimes you can hear the rivers overflowing. Cody kept saying that The Rock lost the people's energy. And he kept saying that The Rock and Roman Reigns together is the perfect storm. He kept saying that The Rock put his hands on him and slapped him in the face. And... Cody ended up saying what that means is he will hit Rock back. So then Seth Rollins ended up making his way to the ring. Of course, he was wearing a leopard coat while the fans were going, whoa. Rollins then took a bow. I gotta say, Rollins at that kickoff press conference, he was just standing there looking like a clown. During that whole Rock, Roman, Cody Rhodes shtick. He was just standing there. Just watching what was going on. So Cody ended up saying that Rollins should take a bow. 
He ended up saying, before they get started with whatever this is, Cody ended up thanking Rollins for coining to his aid at the press conference. Rollins ended up saying that he is welcome. He ended up saying as much as he was looking forward to saying he is welcome. Rollins ended up saying that as much as he was looking forward to defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Cody at WrestleMania, he understands his decision. Rollins ended up saying that he understands why Cody chose the Tribal Chief and his title. Rollins ended up saying that Cody has to finish the story, and millions of people want to see Cody finish his story. He ended up saying now that this that now that the decision is made, Rollins wants to make this clear to Cody. He ended up saying that Cody needs needs to finish this story. He ended up saying that Cody needs to finish this for his dad, Dusty, for him and every person here tonight. Rollins ended up saying that if Cody does not beat Roman at WrestleMania and take the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, the landscape on the other side of WrestleMania is very dark. He ended up saying that you have the most powerful champion of the modern era. He ended up saying that Reigns gets more power and leverage, meaning he shows up less and defends the title less. He ended up saying that the glass ceiling gets higher and the brass rings get higher. He ended up saying that this could be the last real chance they have to take that title and power and give it to the people. So Rollins ended up saying that Cody might be the man for the job. But what is his plan? He ended up saying last year, Cody got screwed out of the title in the main event of WrestleMania. He ended up saying that the Usos were there, Paul Heyman was there, and Sol Sokoa was there. He ended up saying that Cody didn't get the job done, but he fought his way back. He ended up saying that Cody won the Royal Rumble again, and that the deck is stacked against Cody just the same, except the bar has been raised. Rollins ended up saying that Cody isn't dealing with just Jimmy, Sol Sokoa, and Paul Heyman. He's dealing with the most powerful man in the entertainment industry. And he has to deal with The Rock. So Rollins ended up saying that he tends to agree with Lexington, Kentucky. He ended up saying that's why he's here to tell Cody that he does not have to fight this battle alone. So Rollins ended up saying to uh, Cody that they haven't always seen eye to eye. But Cody wants to take everything from the tribal chief. Rollins ended up saying that he felt that deep in his soul. And that's why at the press conference when The Rock laid his hands on Cody, he stepped up. Rollins ended up saying that he's tired of these entitled pricks getting away with it. So Rollins ended up saying that he had to admit something. He ended up saying that the man Roman Reigns became is partly his fault. He ended up saying 12 years ago they came down the steps in their tactical vests. Of course, Reverson one of the great groups in the WWE, The Shield. He ended up saying that he is partially responsible for Roman, but he never imagined the monster he would become. He ended up saying that monster has two heads. He ended up saying that Reigns is standing side by side with the one man on this planet who is as entitled and selfish as he is. He ended up saying when it comes to fighting the bloodline, The Rock and Roman Reigns there is only one man on earth who is uniquely sued to be his shield. Rollins ended up saying that he'll give Cody a hint. He ended up saying that he was once an architect and he is now a visionary and a, re a revolutionary. He is Seth freaking Rollins. So Rollins then walked off and that was how the segment ended. But this was one hell of a segment. This was a very good segment here with Cody and Seth Rollins. Just really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this segment. And then we had Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly was backstage with Jey Uso and the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Kathy Kelly ended up announcing that Jay will face Gunther next week on Monday Night Raw for the Intercontinental Championship. So we had Jay Uso in the New Day end up celebrating. Jay end up saying that he'll get a big W next week. Sorry, Jay, you're not going to get that big W next week. Gunther will be retaining the Intercontinental Championship.
And then we saw Liv Morgan. This was a uh, little uh, video promo from Liv Morgan. She ended up saying that she was on the run of a lifetime until Rhea Ripley injured her arm. She ended up saying that she is back for her revenge and will take everything from Rhea Ripley. So then Zoe Stark ended up saying that she's been making history and has taken out Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. She ended up saying that she'll continue to make history all the way to WrestleMania. So it was a little uh, Liv Morgan, Zoe Stark, you know, promo here from the both of them. And then we had the match between them, which was an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. This was a okay match here. Was a great no. But Liv Morgan, you know, she's been getting better and better uh, in the ring. So the match got on the way. Liv Morgan ended up rolling Zoe Stark up. And then Zoe Stark ended up kicking out. Liv Morgan ducked the clothesline from Stark, started punching away at her in the corner. Stark quickly ended up bouncing Liv Morgan into the corner. Liv Morgan then ended up stomping uh, Zoe Stark down. Liv Morgan ended up going for a roll-up, but Zoe Stark ended up holding the ropes. Stark then ended up clotheslining Morgan down. Stark ended up punching away at Morgan. She ended up going for a slam to Morgan, but Liv Morgan ended up sliding out. Ended up hitting the Hurricanrana to uh, Zoe Stark. Liv Morgan ended up sending Zoe Stark into the apron and shouldered her. Liv Morgan ended up bouncing Zoe Stark off the turnbuckles, and she had pinned a springboard drop kick to knock Zoe Stark to the floor. Liv Morgan ended up going for a suicide dive, but Zoe Stark ended up punching Liv Morgan in the face. Stark ended up going for a springboard, but Liv Morgan punched Zoe Stark to the floor. Liv Morgan headed to the top rope, but Zoe Stark ended up getting on the apron, and she grabbed Liv Morgan. Stark then delivered the Death Valley driver to Liv Morgan on the apron. And then Might Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Might Night Raw came back from the commercial, Liv Morgan was in control of the match. She ended up hitting Zoe Stark with a diving code breaker from the second rope. She ended up going for the cover to which Stark ended up kicking out. So Liv Morgan ended up charging Stark in the corner. Stark countered with a power bomb. She ended up going for the cover to which uh, Liv Morgan ended up kicking out. Stark ended up pulling herself up. Stark ended up flattening Liv Morgan with a springboard missile drop kick. Champ going for the cover, and Liv Morgan ended up kicking out. So at the end of the match, we had Zoe Stark heading to the top rope, and she ended up diving for a corkscrew, but Liv Morgan moved out of the way. Liv Morgan ended up hitting the code breaker. Stark was shown leaning on the ropes, and Liv Morgan then ended up hitting her with the oblivion. So Liv Morgan ended up going for the cover, and there you go, Liv Morgan. Ended up winning the match. And Liv Morgan is now joining Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch in the Elimination Chamber. Of course, the winner will face Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship at WrestleMania, which obviously is going to be Becky Lynch. It's going to be Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship at WrestleMania. But overall, the match was okay between Liv Morgan and Zoe Stark. And then we saw the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day was walking backstage. You know, Damian Priest, Balor, Jaden McDonough, Dominic Mysterio, and also R Truth started walking alongside them. Damian Priest ended up saying that he likes R Truth, but the joke is over, and that there was no initiation. He ended up saying that every beating was just a beating. Priest ended up saying that he's being really clear. Tonight, it's an execution. So, he ended up saying to R2, can he get that through his skull? So, the Judgment Day walked off, and R-Truth looked all upset. And pretty much, that was basically that. And then, as Mike and I Raw came back from the commercial, R-Truth was on the phone. R-Truth was on the phone with The Miz. He was begging Miz to get on a plane and get to Lexington. So Adam Pierce ended up saying to R Truth that his match is right now. So R Truth ended up shouting to Miz that Judgment Day wants to kill him. And so R Truth made his way out. And then we got the match Jaden McDonough versus R Truth. Match was just mid, in my opinion. McDonough ended up coming out, 
strong on our truth our truth ended up fighting back at McDonough. He bounced McDonough off the top turnbuckle. Truth ended up sending McDonough into the ropes and connected with a hip toss. So our truth ended up doing a split. He connected with a running forearm on McDonough. Truth then connected with a back body drop to McDonough. He lifted McDonough and ended up hitting the AA, the attitude adjustment on McDonough, just like John Cena. So Dominic then pulled McDonough out of the ring. So as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, our truth and McDonough were exchanging punches to each other. Truth ended up shoving McDonough to the corner. He ducked the clothesline, and he ended up hitting a pair of show tackles like John Cena, which was followed up by a back suplex power bomb. So R2 was set up for the five knuckle shuffle, but McDonough ended up kicking Truth in the head. Truth ended up quickly taking McDonough back down, and he hit the five knuckle shuffle. Truth then ended up lifting McDonough, but McDonough ended up sliding off. He ended up rolling Truth up with a handful of tights, and then R2 ended up kicking out. R2 then hit the lie detector on McDonough. He was then sent up for the scissor kick, but McDonough moved out of the way. McDonough connected with the devil inside on R-Truth. He ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Jada McDonough ended up winning the match. Post-match, Judgment Day was celebrating the ring. Bala ended up charging R-Truth, but Truth ended up avoiding it. Truth ended up going face-to-face with Damian Priest. McDonough then ended up grabbing R-Truth, and he ended up getting punched down. Priest then punched R-Truth down. So we had a beatdown on our truth from uh, the Judgment Day. And then DIY end up run down with some chairs, you know, Gargano and Champa. So they end up run down and Judgment Day end up escaping out of the ring. So Gargano and Champa stood tall with our truth. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, mid match from Jada McDonough and our truth. Easy win for McDonough. Although, a lot of people uh, in that crowd probably want to see R-Truth win because R-Truth is the most over guy, you know, when you see Judgment Day there. Everybody was chanting for R-Truth, R-Truth. So now we had Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn was getting ready uh, for his match with Shinsuke Nakamura. And Cody Rhodes came up to Sami Zayn. Cody ended up thanking Sami for helping him against Nakamura last week. He ended up saying that he believes in Sammy, as do the fans. So that was pretty much that. Sammy Zayn and Cody end up embracing. So Cody has confidence that, you know, Sammy could beat Nakamura. But did he? We'll find out. And then we have Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch ended up making her way to the ring. She ended up getting on the mic. She ended up saying that the man has come around to Lexington, Kentucky. She ended up saying that she just saw an interesting sign. And that she's going to the prom in 2034. She ended up saying that we are officially on the road to WrestleMania. And that it has been crazy, wild, chaotic, and confusing road to WrestleMania. She ended up saying that it's also unpredictable. And that's what she loves about this. Becky wants to say that she loves this business so much and that she was 15 years old when she first stepped into a ring. She ended up saying that she has been obsessed ever since. And that obsession has been great most of the time. She ended up saying that she traveled the world and is in front of these fine people right now. She ended up saying that it's the reason a girl who once failed gym class went on to win the main event of WrestleMania. She has seen that it's how she met her husband, Seth Rollins, and also has a daughter, Rue. She has seen that obsession is also the reason she missed birthdays, weddings, and her own father's funeral. She has seen that her daughter is only three years old, but she's already had some difficult conversations with her. Becky has seen that she had to explain to her daughter why her face is busted and bloodied. Why she can't pick her up because of a separated shoulder. And why her daddy wants to fight Maui. She ends up saying that she's going to the Elimination Chamber. And her daughter will see her face smashed on the steel. 
but she'll also see the brutality that her mother is capable of. She has seen that she is obsessed with this and has never been more obsessed about getting the title back she hasn't held in two years. So Becky ends up saying that starts with winning the Elimination Chamber and that she's going face to face with one of the most dominant champions we've ever seen. She ends up saying that a lot of people love Mommy and they don't think anyone can beat her. So Becky Lynch ends up saying that she isn't just anyone and that she ain't never faced anyone quite like Becky. So Becky then ends up asking for a drink and it was lemonade in there. So she ended up asking for a drink to make a toast. She ended up saying if you have a drink, some popcorn or a fist, she wants them to raise it up in the air. She ended up saying this is for Rhea Ripley. She can enjoy her last few weeks as champion. So bottoms up. So that brought out Nia Jax. And get ready for the groans here. So Nia Jax ended up saying that she knows they've had their differences. But she has something to say to her. So Nia Jax got into the ring. So Nia Jax was shown pretending to be emotional. Which was awful. Absolutely awful. Terrible acting from Nia Jax there. She ended up saying that she has so much respect for Becky. She ended up saying that if her mom was half the mom Becky is, she'd be lucky. She ended up saying that she hopes to be a mother one day and use Becky as an example. So Becky looked all confused by this. I don't blame her. So Nia Jax ended up saying that Becky will win the match at Elimination Chamber. And with that passion and that drive for a little girl, there's nothing that will stop her from winning that match and going to WrestleMania. So Nia Jax, of course, was pretending to awful cry. So Nia Jax then ended up saying nothing will stop her from beating Rhea Ripley and winning the Women's World Championship, and that it will be them at WrestleMania. So Rhea Ripley then ended up charging down to the ring, got a big loud ovation from the crowd there. Rhea Ripley took Nia Jax down, started punching away at her, Nia Jax ended up headbutting Rhea Ripley away, and she up knocking Rhea Ripley back. So Nia Jax then avalanched Rhea Ripley into Becky. So Nia Jax lifted Rhea Ripley, but Rhea Ripley ended up sliding off. Nia Jax ended up taking Rhea Ripley out with a right hook. Becky then ended up drop kicking Nia Jax out of the ring. So Rhea Ripley slowly got up, and she stared down at Becky. Rhea Ripley then sidestepped Becky and big booted Nia Jax off the apron. So Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley ended up shouting to Nia Jax, you're going to have to kill me. So pretty much that was basically that. Overall, just a very meh segment it was. And then we saw Jackie Redman. Jackie Redman was backstage with Drew McIntyre. Jackie Redman ended up asking McIntyre about him facing Cody Rhodes next week on Monday Night Raw and being one step closer to the World Heavyweight Championship. McIntyre ended up saying to Jackie Redman that he pushed Cody in this direction. He ended up saying that he's the underdog. McIntyre saying that he's the underdog and that he had to beat Styles to qualify for the Elimination Chamber, one of the toughest wrestlers in the world. McIntyre ended up saying that he's doing things the right way. He ended up saying as for Cody, he should be avoiding two things. His prayers, McIntyre's prayers, and facing him one on one. So that was pretty much what McIntyre had to say. And then we got news that uh, Roman Reigns and The Rock are going to be on SmackDown on Friday. So they will be present. Uh, this Friday. And then we had LA Knight versus Ivar. Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Ivar, of course, accompanied by Valhalla. And this was a decent match here. Match ended up starting off with Ivar. Avalanche and Knight started punching him down. Ivar ended up grabbing Knight. He ended up going for a double underhook powerbomb. But Knight ended up getting out of it. 
Knight started punching away at uh, Ivar, ended up hitting Ivar with a DDT. Ivar quickly rolled out of the ring. LA Knight ended up catching Ivar with a baseball slide, and he ended up bouncing Ivar off the commentary table. Knight ended up sending Ivar rib first into the barricade. He then grabbed Ivar, but Ivar flapjacked uh, Knight onto the barricade. Ivar backed up. He ended up charging for a running crossbody block against the barricade tonight. So then Minot Raw went to commercial. Then when Minot Raw came back from the commercial, LA Knight was in control of the match. He ended up trying to superplex Ivar. Ivar ended up fighting him off, but Knight leapt to the top rope. And Knight ended up hitting a superplex to Ivar. And he ended up going for the cover, to which Ivar ended up kicking out. So Knight ended up avoiding a spin kick from Ivar. He ended up lifting Ivar up. But Knight's back ended up giving out. Knight ended up quickly elbowing Ivar. And he ended up charging. But Ivar connected with a spinning world strongest slam. He ended up going for the cover to which Knight ended up kicking out. So we had later on Ivar ended up charging Knight in the corner. Knight moved out of the way. Knight ended up hitting a running knee to Ivar which was followed up by a power slam. Knight ended up dropping an elbow. And he ended up going for the cover to which Ivar kicked out. Knight started stomping away at Ivar until Valhalla got on the apron. Knight ended up sidestepping an attack from Ivar. Knight ended up going for the BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma, but Ivar ended up getting out, and he delivered a spin kick to Knight. So Ivar ended up going for the Doom Salt off the top, but Knight ended up moving out of the way. Knight connected with the BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma, to Ivar. He ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Ellie Knight ended up winning the match. And Ellie Knight is now joining Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley in the Elimination Chamber. So two spots remain open in the Men's Elimination Chamber match. So, of course, Ellie Knight had to win it. So he did, which we got to say, yeah. But overall, decent match it was from... Uh, Knight and uh, Ivar. And then we saw Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn was walking backstage and he stopped because he got approached by Drew McIntyre. McIntyre ended up warning Sami Zayn to keep his name out of his mouth. So Sami Zayn ended up telling McIntyre to get out of his way. So... That was pretty much basically that. So then, they announced what we're going to see next week on Monday Night Raw. It's going to be Cody Rhodes versus Drew McIntyre. Gunther versus uh, Jey Uso for the Intercontinental Championship. R-Truth, The Miz, and DIY are going to take on the Judgment Day. And there will be a Last Chance Battle Royal. For the losers of the Women's Elimination Chamber qualifying matches. So that's what we're going to see on My Night Raw next week. And then we saw Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce was talking with Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. And they were interrupted by Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green ended up saying to Adam Pierce that she wants to be in the Elimination Chamber match. Because WrestleMania can't be the biggest without her. So Pierce ended up saying that he has a lot to consider. Chelsea Green ended up saying that she wants a one-on-one -on -one match. And not a match with all the losers. So Chelsea Green ended up saying that she's going to go talk to management. Not realizing that Adam Pierce is management. So Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark end up approaching... Uh, Adam Pierce about a tag title match. So Shayna Baszler was like, oh, you know, Chelsea Green is not going to make it to WrestleMania because how about we just beat her down limb by limb or something in the vein of that. So Adam Pierce was like, I need a drink. And pretty much that was that. And Chelsea Green's like, Oh, I'm going to go talk to management. So 
So that was that. Main event. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. This was a good match here. And the match started off uh, slow with the both of them. Sami Zayn ended up sending Shinsuke Nakamura into the ropes. He ended up pulling the top rope down to get Nakamura out of the ring. Sami Zayn ended up going for a dive. And Nakamura ended up moving out of the way. Sami Zayn landed on his feet, as did Nakamura. So Nakamura ended up doing the come on to Sami Zayn. And then Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. And as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, Sami Zayn came off the second rope with a diamond elbow to Nakamura's head. He ended up going for the cover, to which Nakamura kicked out. Nakamura quickly backed Sami Zayn to the corner, and he did some bad vibrations. Nakamura ended up laying Sami Zayn on the top rope. He ended up kneeing uh, Sami Zayn in his midsection. He ended up going for the cover, to which Sami Zayn ended up kicking out. So Nakamura ended up kicking Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn ended up blocking the kick. Nakamura ended up hitting a rebound kick to Sami Zayn's skull. He ended up going for the cover, to which Sami Zayn ended up kicking out. We had Nakamura end up hitting a sliding German suplex to Sami Zayn. He ended up going for the cover, to which Sami Zayn ended up kicking out. Nakamura ended up elbowing Sami Zayn, and he hit the ropes, but Sami Zayn countered with the Michinoku driver to Nakamura. He ended up going for the cover, to which Nakamura ended up kicking out. And then as Monday Night Raw came back from its final commercial break, Nakamura was shown kicking away at Sami Zayn's chest in the corner. We had Nakamura end up sizing uh, Sami Zayn up for a Kinshasa, but Sami Zayn avoided that, and he hit the blue thunder bomb. He ended up going for the cover to which Sami Zayn, or Nakamura, I'm sorry, Nakamura ended up barely kicking out. Sami Zayn then sized Nakamura up for a Huluva kick, but Nakamura ended up getting out of the ring. Sami Zayn ended up following Nakamura out. He ended up going to dive through the turnbuckles for a DET, but Nakamura stunned Sami Zayn with a kick to his head. So Nakamura ended up coming off the ropes with a diving knee to Sami Zayn's head. He ended up going for the cover, and Sami Zayn ended up kicking out. So we had uh, Nakamura end up sizing Sami Zayn up. He ended up charging at Sami Zayn, but Sami Zayn turned Nakamura inside out with a clothesline. Sami Zayn ended up grabbing Nakamura by his hair. He ended up slapping Nakamura in the face a few times. He started punching away at Nakamura. Sami Zayn then grabbed Nakamura and ended up hitting an explorer into the corner. He sized Nakamura up. But then Sami Zayn got distracted by Drew McIntyre run down to the ring. Nakamura then drop kicked Sami Zayn in his knees. And that led to Nakamura hitting the Kinshasa. So Nakamura ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Shinsuke Nakamura. Ended up winning the match. He ends up winning the match in a long while. When was the last time Nakamura ended up winning the match? I can't remember. Nakamura has been on a losing streak. And this is the first win that he got in God knows how long. Since the last time he won a match. So post-match, Drew McIntyre ended up looking at Sami Zayn. He got into the ring. McIntyre and Nakamura end up double teaming on Sami Zayn. McIntyre then end up stopping Sami Zayn's face until Cody Rhodes ran down to make the save. Cody Rhodes took out Nakamura at ringside. He got into the ring. Cody started punching away at McIntyre and he ended up pinning the Cody cutter to McIntyre. Cody then ended up taking Nakamura out with the crossroads. So Cody was fired up. He challenged McIntyre to get back in the ring, but McIntyre did not oblige to that. And pretty much that was how Monday Night Raw went off the air. Overall, good match. Good main event between Nakamura and Sami Zayn here. But overall, Monday Night Raw, just a very mediocre show it was. Like I said at the beginning, this show... Could say was better than last week's show, which last week's show was absolutely awful. But this show was mediocre tonight. But anyways, that's it for the Monday Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. 
comment, subscribe, and I will see you all on Wednesday for AW Dynamite. So see you all then.